Hi everyone. Welcome to this video on Virtual Meetings 101, Zoom Engagement Tools. I'm Dave Clausen, the Director of the Mid-America Prevention Technology Transfer Center. And before we jump into the content, I wanted to share a little background on this video. We've partnered with Hue Life to offer a series of virtual facilitation labs to our region. And this is just an excerpt from the first session, Virtual Meetings 101. I've pulled out the section on Zoom tools and strategies to increase engagement in your virtual meetings. All of our participants loved this information and found it very valuable. Now, in this video, you'll be seeing the instructional portions of the virtual lab, where we've edited out the practice and small group activities for time constraints. Without further ado, let's get into the Zoom engagement tools. Really, one of the things, and this is not available unless in our Zoom setting, so if Dave did not have this on in his, you would not have this option to use these cues. So it also needs to be able to be set up prior to the meeting to make sure this is turned on. So no, some of these features are not available on the platform you are using. You need to go back into your settings and make sure that those interactions are available to you. It's all found under the meeting setup, and this particular section is called engagement. Um, like it says here, the, the participants, this is a great way for participants to give you feedback. It is only the, if I'm a host or a co-host, that's the only people that get to see the image pop up in your window. So when you use one of these cues, I see your image and I see a little icon show up in your picture. Um, you all aren't going to see that, but I get to see that. Uh, there's a clear all. So once you do a poll or something like that, then the host or co-host are going to clear out the icons. The other thing that's really good about using this as engagement, think about if you had three options you want people to vote on. So you could have people check the yes if they want option A. Um, then under the more, there's the thumbs up. I would try to choose positive ones or give me a coffee cup if you want option C. Uh, so just using the icons that are there to be able to do dot voting, so to speak, is a great easy way to um, increase engagement. Um, stay away from no's or things like that. Make them fun. All right. So then we're to the point where um, I think the engagement really um, matters a lot. So the other day I was hosting a coach call with some folks and we just needed some time to let people explore. And we broke out into breakout rooms and came back and asked another question that was just kind of fun and engaging and then went into another breakout room. We've been in meetings where there's been 30 people on a call. There's no way you're going to get ideas from everybody if you're all 30 in these little postage stamp video images, right? So using the breakout rooms is a super way of engaging. And this too has to be turned on in your Zoom meeting setup. You won't have that option in, as a host unless you have it turned on prior to the meeting starting. So don't think your platform is broken. It's just because you have to go in here and make sure this is turned on. This is a point in this particular training where we like to say, is there anyone that would like to explore the option for this? Because we'd like to have you guys experience a breakout room. So Jennifer will be prompted soon to be uh, accept host rights, and she's nodding, she is. So that is how easy it is to transfer this um, power, you get the power, Jennifer, to uh, another person in the, in the meeting. And she will be going through some screens. We go to the next one where she gets to choose. Um, she, she'll click on the bottom where we have our mute video and all that. She has one that has this breakout room now. All right, so then when she clicks on that, what happens is she gets this assigned participants. You get to choose how many, per, how many rooms and how many um, one-on-one or two-on-ones or three-on-ones you want to um, have the breakouts. It automatically will do the math and distribute people, or if in the case where you really want to make sure that you have the right folks with the right people, if you're working on action teams or whatever, and you need to make sure these three people are together, you can choose manually. And then your whole list of people show up, and you just start clicking in and signing folks. And then, um, so you can move people as well from one room to the other. 
And the other thing that is here as one of the options is you can have a predetermined number of minutes that that breakout room will be open, which is awesome because, you know, as a facilitator, you don't want them to go like for on forever. And so they get this warning that after, you know, yeah, and we're going to be in this breakout room for 10 minutes and the countdown is there at the top of the screen the whole entire time that you're in that breakout room. Um, you also can change the countdown timer. So when you close a room, it gives you a countdown timer that in 59 seconds is the default. So one minute is the default. But if you want it to be, a, you know, let's call them back in 30 seconds, they can wrap up their conversations in 30 seconds. You can change that as well here under options. This is all being seen by Jennifer under her breakout as a host right now. The timer feature from a participant perspective is really helpful when you ask people so they can see how much time is left versus wondering if they're in how long they're going to be in cyberspace. And the other part is somebody who is only on the phone and not in, um, not on the computer get stuck in those rooms sometimes and they can't cyberspace themselves out back into the main room if they want to. And so having that timer lets them know that they're not forgotten about and that there's, um, you know, that, that, that they'll be coming back to join everybody because I had that the other day, we had one phone call and the other two people were done. They put themselves back in the main room and this person couldn't do it. So the, that timer is helpful for those situations. And as a host, and Jennifer, you're going to get a chance to do this. Um, you can join the breakout rooms easily. You pop in, you pop out. Um, you can just, what I do when I'm, I'm being the host that's jumping in and out of the rooms, I'll tell people, I'll be joining you. But if you, your conversation is good and you don't need my help, just give me a thumbs up and I'll, I'll leave you alone. So because you literally are like walking up next to their table, you don't want to interrupt them but you want them to give you some sort of cue to know I'm good. And then you just leave graciously without interrupting them. Creating a poll. So this is another one that you have to do prior to the meeting. And so Dave has done that prior to this meeting, um, identified to this meeting in the poll he's gonna launch here in a second. Um, we will participate in. And as a host, what I'm seeing is that we have one person, two people. I can see the people that are actually participating in the poll. And then I am able to, um, when we know that we've got all the folks in, we got seven out of the nine, we got eight out of the nine. So, and now we have everyone. So now we can end polling and you should see the results that some of you need to see the podcast. The one thing we learned, and we've known this, but need to have your producer make sure they get a screenshot of it of this if it's some data that you want to keep in order because this is not necessarily the same thing as doing a, a survey monkey or something like that um, you don't get a running um, database of information it is just a quick poll to take a pulse of the folks uh, if you want to keep this information simply using your windows screenshot or your snipping tool to cut and copy this into another document so you have it moving forward is a quick, easy way to make sure you can use this information later. But know that once you close out of this meeting, after we leave the meeting and we're all done, this poll doesn't exist anymore. So you can't go back and capture the information like you could if it was a survey or something like that. Okay. And some more about how you can set it up. Um, Dave, why don't you talk to this because you set up our poll today. So what are some of the things that you did to make our poll? Yes, so it's easiest if you do this, like you said, ahead of time. Uh, you'll just enter a, a title for the poll so that when I called it podcast and I click the anonymous box and then just type the question and you can add 10, you can add 10. At the bottom of my controls where I have the mute, stop video, share screen, chat, there's also the poll feature. So I click that and it pops up a window on my end and it gives me the option to launch polling. And so then I launch it and then it gives me the option to end the poll and then share the results and stop sharing. It's fairly, fairly simple. If you have more than one poll, it will show up there. And I am complete. Thanks, Dave. 
The next one is kind of a fun one, and I, I, I'm, you know, I knew it was here, and I was like, okay, we'll put it into this class, um, this lab, but I'm not sure that it will be something that everyone will want, but every time we've used it, any facilitation we've done or whatever, it's been one of the most fun features. People really enjoy it. It's not a perfect thing, but it is a, a tool that does engage folks. And so this is found underneath, um, it may be on your bottom of your toolbar, but more often where you see in the top of your screen, you're viewing Stephanie's screen, and then the view options, that's where you're gonna find annotate is underneath there. Um, and so once you get that, you can go to the next slide. We're going to have you, if you were to go anywhere in the United States right now, instead of marking where you're from, finding that annotate, find where it has the stamp and click on one of the icons and then move to the part of the United States where you would like to visit. So this is a way for people to be interactive with it. You'll notice it goes to the PowerPoint or whatever you're sharing on your screen. It will not show up unless you're sharing your screen. So it only goes with, and it could be that you're sharing a um, Google Drive or you're sharing whatever you may be sharing they can add this, um, they can add to it. Go ahead and play around with that. You can add text, you can draw, play around with some of those things that are there. Stephanie's less than favorite feature is the spotlight. <laughs> She's not the fan of the laser. All right, look at you guys, type in Kansas, you're wiping stripes. So think about some uses that you might have for this in some of your presentations. It's a great check-in tool. Or think of the, a slide like with three media campaigns that you're needing them to vote on. You know, you could have three media campaigns on a slide and you know, put a heart by the one that you like the most. That concludes this condensed session of Virtual Meetings 101 Zoom Engagement Tools. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules to watch this video and keep your eyes out because we have more to come.